Yo, my name is Josh Ryder. Here on this channel, I'm learning everything I can to become a better artist with a particular interest in drawing portraits. Today, we'll go over how I drew these two characters from one of my favorite shows, and we'll uncover all the hard lessons I learned along the way. My hope is that you learn something that you can use when creating your own portraits, or at the very least, you like the drawing. Either way, please like the video. All right, y'all, let's draw. Right, so while I'm trying to block in these characters, creating a silhouette and also creating the lightest tone uh, just so I have something to work off of, let me explain kind of how this video is going to work. All right, so in this video, I'm going to break it out into three different parts. The first part is going to go over how I drew Joel. And to be completely honest, I did not do that well in <laughs> drawing him. I did not do well capturing his likeness, in my opinion. And I have a strong idea of why that didn't work out. And so I'll explain all of that and help you learn from my mistakes. Second part of the video, I'll go over how I drew Ellie which I think I did a pretty good job of capturing her likeness, Bella Ramsey's likeness. I have strong ideas of why I think that worked out better than when I drew Joel, so I'll cover those as well. And then at the end, third part of the video, I'll have how I would have done everything better, how I intend to do things better as I continue to make more drawings like this. I've never drawn two portraits at once, especially on the same page before, and so there was a lot to learn, and I know when I carry it forward to my next drawings, I will make sure to, to do it the right way this time. I do have one particular item that just completely saved my ass in this drawing of Joel. Stick around, I'll show you what that is. It surprised me that it worked so well, and without it, I mean, it would have been way worse than it is. All right, so with Joel's drawing, the likeness, sorry guys, it's not there. In portraiture, I definitely learned that it's, it's an ebb and flow. Sometimes you'll have it, and then sometimes you won't have the likeness, and you're honestly just kind of battling back and forth to, to catch it and then you lose it again, it gets muddy, and then you find it again. I had a really hard time just finding my way back with Joel. So I think a big part of the reason Joel's did not work that well is because the reference I was using was just a screenshot from the show, and cool scene, cool setting, good color grading, everything like that works great for the show, but I don't think it worked that well for a reference. It ended up being kind of fuzzy. The lines weren't highly defined. It wasn't a high quality image. And I didn't really think that mattered all that much. I thought I'd be able to just to make it work. But I learned that it really does pay to have a quality reference, a, a high quality image to, to base your drawing off of. And even then, I can't blame it fully on that because whenever I laid out my drawing, the sketch really should have told me everything that I had wrong. And so whenever I did my sketch, I'll tell you what, I did not do the, the right thing. Whenever you're doing a sketch, you really wanna, you wanna flip the image. When you're drawing digitally, it's pretty easy. You can just mirror it when you're drawing it and you can see all the irregularities, all the flaws. When you're drawing traditionally, you either have to like hold a mirror up to it or hold it up to a mirror and look at it that way, take a picture of it and then flip it that way. Uh, those are all very strong things to do in order to spot the irregularities, spot the imperfections. And I guess I just didn't do that <laughs> because whenever I really got deep into the drawing, I noticed that his eyes and his proportions, his nose didn't really match up the way it needed to. And so in my sketch, if I would have, if I would have flipped it, you'd be able to tell that difference and I could correct it immediately before any of the ink goes down, before any of the markers go down. And uh, yeah, I ended up paying the price for that. And also having a good sketch allows you to have more confidence in what you're laying down permanently. And I just don't think I ever held strong confidence in what I was drawing with Joel. I felt like I was just constantly trying to save it. And I didn't feel like I was, you know, drawing into it. Not like the, the way I did with Ellie. Ellie was easy. You know, with Joel, I just felt like I was, I was just, I was just fighting. I was just fighting the whole time. That should have been my sign to, hey man, take a step back and dive into it with a, a clearer perspective of what I was trying to achieve and how I wanted it to look in the very end. Just had a hard time picturing that end goal with Joel. Don't get me wrong, with Joel, I think I did a pretty good job of his shirt in particular. I love the soft edges I created between the background and him, and then also how he faded into his hair and his ear. But there was just more wrong with that, and it really comes down to the likeness being so far off that it just really kind of hurt me to, to continue it and to post it. But this is all part of the learning process. If I don't fail, then I can't learn. And so I wanna just share that with you. Do better than I did. 
And another little quick tip to whenever I was drawing with the ink, I drew all of the markers, all of the tones in first, and then I went back in and I drew the ink to add the details, the fine details. I ended up going back over it with markers, but I did my ink enough time to, to dry around the details. And so when I used that marker, I ended up smearing my ink and uh, yeah, I did not add to the quality of that drawing. Gotta be careful, be patient, let the things develop and then follow through. I, think I did a pretty good job of that most of the drawing. I just know at the very end, I tend to get impatient. Definitely rushed it, definitely paid for it. Now with Ellie, I love the drawing from the beginning. I don't know what it was, but it was just one of those things that I knew I did a good job. As I laid in those first tones, it was bold. You know, it was a vast difference between my mid-tones and my light tones. And usually I'm pretty hesitant about that. Usually I get a little nervous. Uh, I definitely did with Joel, but with Ellie, I knew it would work out. As I drew, I protected my highlights. I did things the smart way with her. And I also didn't go too heavy on the shadows because she was in the foreground and the reference that I was using, it had softer shadows. Uh, but the shadows were still well-defined. And I think that helps a lot. Uh, so going back to image quality. So that was my big problem with Joel. Well, with Ellie, I picked a, a photo from a poster and the poster image was obviously very high quality because it's made for print. It's made for fast reads, made for high details. As opposed to Joel, whenever I did the screenshot, everything was kind of fuzzy and it was made for TV, not meant to be still. I think that makes a huge difference. Whenever you work with a strong reference and then in turn a strong sketch from that reference, I was just able to draw so much more comfortably, so much more confidently, knowing that as I was laying it down, that it was what I wanted it to look like. And confidence goes a long way in drawing anything, but particularly portraits, because you're not fighting it. You're just letting it happen, letting it grow organically, let it become what it was meant to be. And that's way more philosophical than I intend it to be, but that's just how it feels. It just feels like you're you're doing it right whenever you're in that flow. I will say another thing that I felt was done well in this drawing was just switching to a different paper. So the paper I used before, it was just like this random cardstock that I found at work. And so I was just using that. And it, it's a little bit bigger than what I used for this one, but it's not meant to handle layers and layers and layers of, of ink alcohol markers. It's just how I draw, at least now. And so it's, it's gonna warp uh, whenever you lay a bunch down at once. But the paper held up pretty well. I've been using this uh, Artax number 213 and it came with the markers that I got for Christmas that year. Not sponsored or anything, Artax, holler at your boy. But I really do like the paper. Now that's the size of it. But the back of it, you know, I mean, that's how they all end up looking. But this is nothing compared to those other drawings I've done. The Martin Luther King one and the uh, self-portrait, those were just caked on in the back. That's fine, um, as long as the front of it looks good. But I think that was a good move to switch to that. It's more used for art purposes, used for markers. I didn't use any colored pencils in this drawing either. In my last video, I said you can't really achieve a realistic look without colored pencils. And I still think that holds some value, but with this one, I was really surprised that I was able to capture such a good likeness and such a realistic likeness with just markers and a little bit of pen. And speaking of pen, I think that was really a game changer too, was just using a pen for those hard edges, the fine details. It was able to draw your attention where I needed it to go, where I wanted it to go, and make this drawing look more confident to me. Uh, like I knew what I was doing, right? And so that's definitely something I'm going to incorporate more as I draw. I don't want things to look cartoony, so I, I'm gonna try to stay away from outlining everything, because then it just won't retain its realistic value. You gotta have those soft edges in certain areas. That's, that's how our eyes see things. But using the pen for high detail areas, especially around the eyes and the nose and lips and some of the hair, those high contrast, high importance areas, I'm definitely going to make sure I highly detail. All right, y'all, I promised you an MVP of this entire drawing. I tell you right now, it's the colorless blender. It's the zero. Without it, 
I wouldn't have been able to erase that eye that I completely messed up on the sketch. And so what I did is I just caked it on there, man. I flooded the entire area that I wanted to go away and it worked. You can see here, you gotta be careful what you're doing because it will bleed through pretty badly. I mean, you can see I just basically pushed what I didn't like all the way out. And you can't even tell, you can't even tell on the front side of that. Real game changer. From what I understand, you can lay it out like you do in watercolor, just lay like a like your, your wet on wet method and just cake that on first and then you go through and add your colors that you wanna to blend together and it makes it easier, which I have found that, but I don't really find that it really hurts anything to not do that either. That being said, if I would've done that on Joel's shadow side, I probably would've been more successful. Mental note. And you can see where I went through I mean, it's just completely flooded. I let it dry overnight and then the next day it was super faded out, exactly what I hoped it would do. And I was able to go through and sketch in the new eye where it should have been. Uh, even then, I still don't think I did a great job of laying all that out, but I think it was one of those things that was too far gone before I could really do anything. I salvaged it, but it was, it was a band-aid on a gunshot. Right, well we're nearing the end of the drawing and let me just go over what I would do better next time. Uh, first off, definitely be more selective about my reference photo. Gonna make sure it's a high quality image with clear lines and that's gonna make a big difference I think in laying out the drawing. Uh, also having confidence moving forward and just knowing what I'm seeing and rendering it the right way. As I said before, when you do that, when you have more confidence in your sketch, you can have more confidence throughout your entire drawing. Just knowing that your, the underlying drawing is good and you kind of just focus on tones and uh, color if you're working with color. You can focus on a lot of that because your, your framework is there. You don't have to worry so much about the structure, you just worry about what, what you see. And another thing too is I'm definitely going to next time respect my medium a bit more. The point to where I, you know, drew my details and then I went back and drew marker over that and created those smears on it, created a very unprofessional look. And I didn't really respect what I was doing there. I did the same thing with the white highlights of the hair on Ellie. It's just not, it's just not the look I was trying to go for. So I think I just need to make sure that once this medium is done, you know, all done, and whenever I move into my details, stick with those. And, you know, worst case scenario, if I do end up having to go in with marker again, uh, just to cover certain things, definitely wait until that pen dries. You know, like I said, respect the medium to, and know what it can do. The last thing that I would do better is just compose the final product better. Like I said, just know a direction I want to go. And I don't think I'll know that every time. I think it's one of those things that the more drawings I do, the more I develop my own style and the way that I interpret things. And so as I do that, the drawing themselves are going to evolve and the details and everything are going to evolve into a way that I feel looks best. And you develop your own style by what you see. You see things differently than anyone else. But that may be something that I cover in a different video. So if that's something you're interested in, just let me know in the comments. But knowing where you want to go, that also ties into what details you want to put. So like when I talked about the, the details around the eye and everything with the pen, I like that. I like the way that looks. So again, it just comes down to planning it out, composing it, and then following through with what your final vision is. Right, so the things that I would do better. Better references, so I have more confidence in my sketch and framework. Pay attention to what medium I'm using, when and where. And then also just compose my photo better. So whenever I move to my final product, the viewer knows where their eye needs to go. So that's the final drawing. And if you stuck around this long, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize. Uh, I have some congestion and sound like a, uh, like a sick Muppet. So this whole experience has taught me a lot and it's more than anything taught me what I need to work on. And I have some ideas on how I can improve my portrait sketching. Cause I, I wanna get quicker. I wanna get quicker at recognizing things and laying things down to where it makes sense. And it, it involves the uh, 100 heads challenge, which I'll, I'll let you know more on that soon. So definitely subscribe if you want to see what I got coming up next. 
and then also hit the bell notification so you can know exactly when that comes out. It should be here in a week or two. I'm gonna to try to be more regular on these things and that's gonna help with this particular challenge because I'm gonna to have to churn out a lot at a time. So stick around if that's something you wanna see. Anyway, y'all, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.